All right, so the first technique is where the attacker has given us all the pre-attack cues and we see that an attack is imminent. This is where we're fortunate enough to see it coming and we can prepare ourselves to absorb that oncoming uh, uh, strike or blow, whatever it might be. So in this particular case, uh, Ryan being the aggressor, he's going to try to attack with the right hand. So we have, like I said, we have the ability to see it coming. Structurally, we want to be in a place of balance. In this particular uh, technique, what's sometimes referred to as a rhino block, but essentially what we're trying to do is protect our temple and our chin while the elbow makes contact with the aggressor. All right, so how it looks in this position here, the attack is imminent. We're going to structurally sound make contact. The tip of the elbow is gonna make contact with whatever it might be. It could be his chin, it could be his clavicle, depending on the size of the attacker. But we wanna make contact with some part of his body that's gonna help nullify his forward aggression. So as his forward movement makes contact with the elbow, that gives us an opportunity to lock in the top hand into the back of the neck. So with a, a monkey grip, and the all in the bone is gonna run along the chin line, we lock everything in here. Get him to look away. The opposite hand traps the top of the bicep where the bicep and the tricep meet. We're gonna open them up here. What this affords us is the opportunity to engage with a low line strike. So as we strike with the knee, we get him to hinge at the hips like you see right now. Once we have the individual slightly off balance, where their spine alignment is compromised and their hips are hinged, we're in a good dominant position. But we know that the aggressor may be still forward coming with lots of aggression. And as he drops down and tries to change his angle of attack, we're gonna counter that with an underhook on this close side. So we counter his forward and downward motion with the underhook here, and as we trap the rear delt, we're also gonna get our feet offline. So as we get our feet offline, we're gonna create a space for his head. So in this particular case, as you see Ryan being the, the uh, uh, attacker, the aggravator, if you will, as he reaches for one of these legs, we're gonna get that out of the way and redirect his position downward here. Knee placement on the ribs, on the side of the throat or head, pinch in on the shoulder, pull up on the tricep here. Now we have the ability to see what's going on in our periphery. And with our right knee, we want him to feel our presence. What's really important about this position is our feet and toes are activated on the earth. So in the event that he's starting to struggle, scramble to his knees, we can move and we're in a state of mobility where we, at any point, we feel like we're gonna lose the position. We can literally disengage and then reassess the situation. The other thing, the other two positive things with this position is one, we get to get uh, a lot more situational awareness on what's going on out here in the event that he's not by himself and he's got a buddy looking for an opportunity. And the third one is we see what's happening with his live hand. If he starts reaching for a tool, then we can address that. So tricep control, knee pressure, feet are activated on the earth, and we can see exactly what's going on here.